This is the Hollywood Outsider. My name is Aaron Peterson. I am your host. With me today are my co-hosts, Brian Williams. Hello. Hello, Brian, and Justin McCumber. Hey, man, how are you doing? Doing fantastic. How are both of you guys doing? Excellent. Sweet. That's riveting. <laughs> um, we are a movie and TV podcast. If you've never tuned in before, what we're going to talk about. Uh, basically, the newest in movie and TV news, new and upcoming uh, film and DVD releases. Uh, we're going to review any release, recent releases that have come out, which this week will be in time. Each week we talk about a new topic that's kind of catching ours or our listeners' attention. And this week it's going to be our, our listener. And we have a mini trivia game that we do called Stump the Hoe. Hoe being a Hollywood outsider, not actual prostitutes. And then we'll do a little flashback uh, DVD at the end, which is kind of an obscure little known film recommendation from our host. With that, let's get into the show, if you guys are ready. No. Okay. Well, we can wait. Just go ahead and make yourself comfortable. Right. I was going to um, make a sandwich. <laughs> if you could, it'd be great. Well, uh, first thing I've heard, let's go into movie news, is that a stuntman was apparently killed during the filming of Expendables 2. I figured I'd start with a happy Christmas thought. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what you're known for, is bringing up the room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Aaron, always bringing the fun in. That's right. I'm, I'm like the joy maker. Yeah, party guy. What do you guys think about this? I mean, you think it's going to taint the film at all? No. I don't think anybody's going to care. <laughs> well, don't say that. I mean, it is pretty sad. I feel bad for the, the no, stuntman. I, I, yeah, Who absolutely. gave his life for it's, Sylvester it's, Stallone. You know, I mean, it's a kind of a hazard at the job, but, you know, I mean, nobody's going to – nobody knows this guy. He's a he's a he's just a unknown stuntman, and, I mean, it, it's – I don't mean it to sound I'm as bad as I'm making it sound. Man. Sounds like the Maybe. fall guy. Because I'm the unknown stunt man. It makes <laughs> Eastwood look so fine. <laughs> <laughs> At least once oh. an episode, we get Justin singing. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. I got to stop that. Yeah. Just don't break into open arms again. Brian. Uh, don't make me. Don't make me do it. <laughs> so, what were you saying? He's oh. just an unknown stunt man. So, therefore, it's really not yeah, going to do much. Apparently, he wasn't the stunt man for any of the big stars. So. Yeah, I mean it's I, I hate it for him and his family, and the other guy that got, you know, he got hurt also, but he didn't die. So, it's uh, I mean it's it's unfortunate, but unfortunately it's a, you know, it's a hazard of the job. You're a stunt man. You do the crazy shit nobody else does. So that's true. It does them um, bring up a drum that I beat on occasion, and I'll go ahead and beat it again. Is it absurd to anyone other than me that stunts are still not an Academy Award. You have got fucking costumers and makeup people and everyone else involved with goddamn movies getting an award. But the people who really put their ass on the line, they don't get an award. And I, that is bullshit. I agree with that. I think they've been trying to do that. I know Schwarzenegger tried. Um, yeah, they've been trying forever. And for some reason, they just won't make it a, a, a category. And it's absurd. Yeah, I guess cartoons come before men that put their lives on the line. Yeah. Oh, it just makes me so mad. That's a good point. I think if Hollywood listens, they should get on that because we might have some pull. Can I hope so. I think I mean, we do. I'm sure we're dropping into the ears of all sorts of Hollywood movers and shakers. It's, Hell yeah, we are. We're going to have a movie deal by the end of the week. Not this week, but a week at some point. Um, moving on so we can get on the happier news because that is pretty depressing. I don't know why the fuck I started with that. Uh, <laughs> bad call. If you're still with us, thank you. God bless you. Um, average movie prices. This is uh, this comes from Brian. The average movie ticket has fallen below eight bucks. Now, not where I live, but according to according to the news uh, across the country, the average is below eight bucks. Now, on one hand. Now, is one, this for Brian? Is he cheap? No, he he brought it to my attention. Oh, okay, <laughs> but <laughs> he is pretty cheap. But on one hand, I'm kind of glad because that means cheaper prices means I can obviously I can see more films and and everything else. But I'm kind of sad because cheaper prices also means m movies are not being as successful in the theater as they used to be. So, do you guys think maybe home video and digital sales are finally making a dent? And and or is it just the economy? Well, the article stated that a lot of this was because there were fewer 3D releases like over a certain period of time than the previous period. Mm -hmm. And since 3D tickets are more expensive, that attributed to a certain rise. But since there's been fewer, that contributed to a, a, a lessening. And, you know, it's eight bucks. We're not talking about a drop of, 
dollars. We're talking a matter of cents. Mm-hmm. So in the grand scheme of things, I doubt this is rocking anybody's particular world. Yeah, because, I mean, the average only dropped, what was it, like a dime or something, something like, like that? that. Yeah, yeah like 10, maybe maybe 15 cents. So you're right, it's not that big of a drop. Um, and I'm sure it'll be one of those things where the average will be up to like 10 bucks by next June. So it's 10 bucks. Right and they away. just add that back into the popcorn price. Exactly. But it's important to note that that average is also like matinees, midnight shows, you know, it's all that stuff combined. It's not, it's not just looking at the average cost at night, you know? Right. <clears throat> but still, I pay 10 bucks for every ticket every time I go to the theater. So I don't know where these $8 movies are. I want to go. There's a theater that opened up near my house called a Starplex, I think. Uh, and it's you know it's a nice theater, and their ticket prices are generally two or three bucks cheaper than like the rave motion or the a m c theaters that I go to and it's a comparable experience and I was surprised at how cheap they were so there are theaters out there that do charge less. you just gotta look for them, but the movie taverns, which are the most expensive, are unfortunately also my favorite, yeah, because you want to get wasted while you're watching a movie no, it's because I want to eat a goddamn meal, <laughs> you know, not and sit in a comfortable chair. You could do that at home. That's true. Good, good call. Uh, now we can go back. We can go into like actual entertaining news because neither yeah. one of those were really entertaining. One was really sad, and one was kind of boring. So, I'm sorry. Once all again, right. if, if you're still with glad us, to, glad to see we're off to a good start. <laughs> J.K. Rowling. J.K. Rowling went on the record as saying that uh, I just thought this was interesting because it kind of brought up one of those. Oh, that would have been awesome. Um, she mentioned that she almost killed off Ron Weasley in the Deathly Hallows book, which therefore would have killed him off in the movie. And I was just curious if, if you guys think that would have been a, a good play. I actually, I heard this, and I got pretty excited. I'm like, that would have made it a lot more... Impactful? Work. Yeah. There you go. There's right word. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Should I break out one of my 50-cent words? Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> just, give him, just give him a 10-cent word. It might work just as well. <laughs> I, might, I might take a half a dime. Yeah, I mean, I, I, one of the things that I really hate about most modern, whether it's TV shows or films or books, is that the people who create them are so reticent to kill off main characters. And I think that's one of the reasons that I really glommed on to Joss Whedon so much, is because he does not have the sphere whatsoever. He will kill off a major character if he feels like that's going to serve, you know, the the greater... Story. That's why, spoiler alert, in Serenity, he killed off Book Animal. early on to kind of get the audience prepared for, hey, people could die. And then when, further spoiler, when Swash got killed, that really amped it up. Because if, if that level of character can get killed on your way to the big fight, all bets are off. Mm-hmm. And so he's got guts. A lot of people don't have it. And I kind of wish that uh, Miss Rowling would have killed off a major character going into that battle. Cause if they don't, most people don't worry about the, the lives of their, the characters they love. Cause they know, uh, you know, this person does just, they don't have the guts to kill this person off. And I kind of wish you would have. Well, I specifically wish you would have in terms of, because when it relates to the movie adaptation, cause obviously, you know, we're not a book podcast, but you know, in the adaptation, I don't think they did a lot of, Focusing on, on on several primary characters in the series because you know the books are so large and they only have so much film to do. So I I think some of the characters that that did have a death or did die in the in the final film, you don't really feel their impact because they weren't really a big part of the actual movies. You know, unless you're a big follower of the book series, it didn't really make an impact. If she would have right. killed Ron Weasley because he was there throughout the entire series, I think as a moviegoer, I think that would have impacted the film a lot more. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? And and that's kind of how I saw it. I think that would have really brought me to the to the threshold that you know this is life or death. This is very important. Um, anybody can die at any time because the whole time I'm watching the the last movie, I didn't for a second think that that Harry Potter or Ron Weasley or Hermione or anybody else would die. I just figured, oh, they're safe. They're safe. The only one that really shocked me was one that I won't talk about because I don't want to spoil it for anybody that hasn't seen it yet. Well, before the the last book came out, didn't they say that there was a, a major, uh, didn't she, I thought she came out and said a, one of the major characters will die. They and did. So I, one of the major I, characters does die. Yeah. But don't, don't, don't spoil it. Don't, no, I, I won't. But when you hear one of the major characters, you're mm-hmm. thinking one of the, 
the big three. The big three. And and I thought, and I actually <clears throat> kind of thought Ron Weasley was probably the prime one. You know, if I was going to pick one of them, you know, would have been him. Because you don't like redheads, mostly. No, no, and no. Gingers. I've got uh, no. I've got I've got ginger blood in my family, so I'm I'm down with the ginger, and um, so I'm <laughs> so I'm good about all that. It's just he just seemed like because he's so kind of goofy and 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 likable expendable right but you but you he i think you've you've got more probably of an emotional attachment to him because for 25 movies now you <laughs> you you've been like wanting him and, and Hermione to to finally pull their heads out of their asses and get together actually i wanted harry and hermione to get together actually anybody and hermione to get together by the time the last movie came around <laughs> I really wouldn't have cared. Snape could have pulled her aside and said, "Hey, you want to do this?" If she dropped, if she dropped right then, I'd be like, "All right, I'm buying it." So, Fair enough. You're a sick motherfucker. Have you seen pictures of her since she became an adult? Yes, she is a awesome. She's a little skinny for my taste, but oh well. I'm sorry. You can kick her out of bed, and I'll come over and pick her up. <laughs> uh, Eddie Murphy. This is my favorite piece of news for the week, even though I'm sure it won't be everybody's, but. Eddie Murphy did an interview with Rolling Stone, and he said he's now he's turning his back on family comedies because they stopped fucking making money. Um, he's not going to do a Beverly Hills Cop 4, but he is going to develop a Beverly Hills Cop show for Axel Foley's son, his character's son in the movie. And he'll, can, he'll do cameo, or not cameos, but he'll do appearances throughout the series. And also, last but not least, he's considering going back on tour finally. What do you guys think about it? You think he's like in his last desperate attempt to recapture the the fans he shunned for the last decade? Decade, more like what? Two decades. Two decades. I mean, yeah, probably. He's had two, maybe three movies that's that's been legit. So I don't, I don't know. I wish him all the best. If he if he does go back on the road, then I hope it works out for him. I, I would like to. He's he's kind of like Mel Gibson, but in the comedy genre that. You know, movies and you know, movies and TV and stuff are funnier with him around. So I would like to see him, you know, be big again and and have a career again. But whatever works for him, I wish him all the best. Mazel tov. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm kind of in the same mind. I really, you know, I I think the interview is basically he's trying to win back his fans. I think he's getting older and now he doesn't care as much about making money because he's made plenty. But he did kind of shit on the adult comedy fans that he had because he hasn't really made anything for them in a very, very long time. I mean, Tower Heist is coming out, but, you know, how much is that really an adult flick? That's more of a PG-rated family, PG-13 family flick. So I don't know if that's really what he's what he's talking about. I think he does need to get an edgy role sometime soon and, and get back on it, so to speak. And I really like that. I'd love to see him on, in tour again. I'd love to see him on tour again. Delirious it, and Raw were, were. I saw him in con. I saw him in concert. In, yeah, uh, but but part of the, the draw tour. back then was that there wasn't many people that had his, you know, raunchy comedy, back then. So that was that was part of the draw to him. And so now it's 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 overplayed. It's okay. It's it's done. It's not a new thing anymore. So you've got to come up with something new, or just new stories. New, you know, just be funny. Mm-hmm. You don't have to necessarily be filthy, but just be funny. Yeah, but care. not every filthy comic out there can can pull off purple leather. That's true. I hope he brings it back. Wouldn't that be great if he went on tour and he wore the same fucking suit? I mean, in, no, <laughs> in his <laughs> in Eddie's defense, though, as, as though I know the guy, uh, he's not the first person to kind of get sucked down the the family friendly. Kind of wormhole. No, um, no, no. Steve Robin Martin. Williams kind of did the same thing. Yeah, Robin Williams Steve for a Martin. while. So I don't fault the guy for wanting to make films that you know his, maybe his kids could watch or he could show to his mama, you know. And and they probably made him plenty of money. Uh, and so I don't fault the guy for wanting to do those films. I'm I'm actually quite glad to hear though that he wants to come back and and start doing films. That he used to do because you know we all remember trading spaces or trading places and and uh, Beverly Hills Cop and you know all the the funny films 
that he used to do back in his earlier days. I would love to see him get back to it. I don't think it's it's too late for him. I think the guy is still really funny. And if he goes on tour, I imagine he's going to really have some some good material. And yeah, I wish him nothing but the best, and, and I'm glad to, to see him coming back around. We'll see what he what he actually does, though. Yeah, right. Like Trading Places was fine, was great. <clears throat> Excuse mm-hmm. me, and, forty-eight um, hours. You, you know, and some of the other stuff was that he did. You know, like uh, what was it, The Golden Child? I love. Give me the knife. Give me the knife. Give me the knife. Wow, I never expected that in this podcast. <laughs> But just, you know, if he would just stay away from the shit like Pluto Nash, then... By the way, that girl, uh, that Charlotte Lewis that was, okay. in the, that was in The Golden Child, ah, she is gorgeous. Anyway, go ahead. No, no, yeah, you're absolutely right. That's definitely worth interrupting. So, I agree with you. <laughs> she did a magazine spread. Google it. Um, okay, well, that's Eddie Murphy. Last thing, he is work, he's writing an alien comedy for Chris Rock and a bunch of other comedians to star in. We'll see if that ever happens. Um, you know, Eddie, Eddie's kind of, he'll do whatever what makes money. So. Tank in space. Is that what it is? <laughs> I don't know. What do you guys think about the idea of doing Beverly Hills Cop show with his son as a character though? Depends on who they get for the son. <clears throat> I'm, I'm of the mind that there are some characters that are only play that should only be played by the person that played them. And that's one of them, honestly. Cause I think the character really is Eddie Murphy. It's not really anything that's on the page. That whole character he made, so uh, they they would have to get somebody really fucking talented. Well, but it's playing his son, so depending on who they hire to do that, we'll see. I mean, this wasn't his actual son's son, was it? No, okay. for the character's son. So yeah, it just depends on who they hire. If they hire somebody great, then I'm sure it'll we'll all love it. And if they hire some shit heel, then <laughs> we'll all come back and hate it. <laughs> but just as a concept, I I don't have a positive or negative. It depends on who they cast. I'd be more excited about a Beetlejuice sequel. <laughs> nice segue. Um, there is news that a Beetlejuice, they are working on a sequel. Get out. Yes, they are. Thanks for, you You should know. You told me about it. Um, you're a douche. You're a douche. Your mom's a douche. <laughs> I'm sorry, in case she listens to this. They're working on a sequel, and I thought when I first read this that it was going to be like a reimagining. They're going to go down that rabbit hole again and remake it. Because that's, you know, what was that, 87, 88, something like that? I mean, it's it's 25 years old. Or, yeah, it's more than that. It's, it's very old. It's very old. It's ready. Yeah, it's ready. But no, they want to do a sequel. Supposedly, the writers want to do a sequel with Michael Keaton as Beetlejuice. Michael Keaton's like six, 55 or 60 years old now. Yeah, but hell, all that makeup on him, shit, he'll look just the same. <laughs> do you guys want to see this? Yeah. Yes. Wow. Yes. Wow. I should love... they get Winona Ryder. Oh, maybe well, she's her free. Child is now calling it Beetlejuice. I'm pretty sure Winona Ryder's free. She's got nothing going on. She'll she'll make time. <laughs> she's probably just sitting around going, "Please, dear God, make a Beetlejuice movie." <laughs> I don't care. I'll take the cameo. I just need the money. I can't buy heroin on no acting. I'm tired of shoplifting from my food. <laughs> So you guys really, you're pumped for this idea? This is yes. pretty cool for you? Yep. Yeah. I mean, I would say I'm pumped, but I certainly think it's a good idea. If uh, if uh, Michael Keaton's willing and able to do it, then fuck yeah. Okay. Uh, one of our, <laughs> this part makes, this one makes me laugh. It really does. Um, the Riddick production got shut down. This is the uh, third movie in the Riddick trilogy. That I'm anxiously awaiting. That I'm, I'm anxiously sure you're about waiting. to tell me good news. I'm anxiously awaiting it, but the production got shut down because they didn't pay the fucking bills. That's so dumb. So I, I'm kind of surprised with this because you know how rare it is for them to shut down production because the bills weren't paid. It's very, very rare. It only happens in porn. <laughs> That's probably true. <laughs> um, I'm sure they're going to work through it. I'm sure it's one of those just minor setbacks that Vin Diesel was spending all that Fast and Furious money a little too fast and furious. And didn't have it in the. You like that? Ooh, but um, you worked. You worked for that one, didn't you? It's better than your fucking segue, bitch. (laughs) Oh, bam! Bam. Kitty's got claws. Let's. Wow. Kitty likes to scratch. Um. So I'm sure they will resume production soon. They are talking about this is an uh an upper an upbeat part of news. Katie Sackhoff has been offered a role as a merc chasing Riddick. Katie Sackhoff of uh, Battlestar Galactica fame. She paid, uh, she played Caratreus. So that's pretty cool. 
I'm pretty excited about that if that happens. But she'll have to get paid first, I'm sure. <laughs> she will work for, <laughs> yeah, she for not, on the honor system? She's not doing layaway. Uh-uh. Did you guys see her in that Bionic Woman remake TV show they did? Yes, I saw it. She was pretty good in that. Yeah, I think she's a good actress. I actually think she's pretty interesting. There was a little mm-hmm. movie called White Noise 2 with had Nathan Fillion was in it. Speaking of Michael Keaton. <clears throat> Yeah, well, it's it's the sequel that he wasn't in. Right. But she's in it, and she actually did pretty well. And Nathan Fillion's in it. And actually, Nathan Fillion's in it? Yeah, it's not a bad All little right. direct-to-DVD movie. Let me go rent it. Okay. Get on that. We'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> Next piece of news, uh, Bill Paxton. This is the last piece of news before we get to trailers and stuff. Bill Paxton is in talks to walk the earth and direct an adaptation of Kung Fu. <laughs> I'm not walk surprised the they're earth. making a Kung Fu remake. I'm just kind of surprised that Bill Paxton's the guy that they're going to throw behind it. Any thoughts? Well, he's, I think he's a pretty good director, actually. Yeah, Frailty. Was it Frailty? Frail, yeah, yeah, Frailty was, I love that movie. That was phenomenal, but. Never seen um, that. So, so it's a really uh, good movie. So, yeah, it's whatever. It, they're remaking everything else. Why not Kung Fu? So. <laughs> Who do you think would make a good uh, David Carradine? Uh, Steven Seagal. Seriously? Ah, fuck. <laughs> you fucking no. throw out Seagal? <laughs> no. God. You know he's, how, the only, you know, he's the only guy I can think of walking around in dresses right now. Do you know how long it would take for him to lose the 400 pounds necessary to to do this role? Did you see him in Machete? Machete? Machete. <laughs> Machete. <laughs> Where the border didn't cross us or whatever. Oh, God. Well, it won't be a, it'll, you know, it'll, they'll probably change it up. It'll be a woman or something like that, so. It'll be. <laughs> and they should get Ryan Gosling. It'll be. <laughs> I would go there, see that. Oh, there you go. It's that just one more great. reason for Taylor Lautner to walk around without a shirt some more. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably oh, true. <laughs> well, that's it for uh, for news. Um, I hope the first two didn't make you too sad. So, um, go, moving on to some of the new trailers that are kind of on the horizon. Um, I saw this first one, which is called We Need to Talk About Kevin. And it messed me up. I, I thought it, it looks like a very disturbing movie about a, a mom who raises her son. She knows the whole time he's not right. And then Damien. he grows. Yeah. He, but it's not like a devil's possessed my kid kind of thing. I mean, this kid just looks like he's mentally imbalanced. And then he grows up and does something horrible. They don't say what it is in the trailer. But did you guys like this trailer? Yeah. It was not what I was what I was expecting. I, I thought it was another... Uh, you know, Oscar bait movie about some autistic kid or something like that until, <laughs> you know, until, until the kid was like shooting the, uh, the suction cup bow and arrow at his mom's face. So that was, the kid looks evil and it, it looks, uh, twisted and, and somewhat original. So it did looks, you, did you guys get an looks indication? Good, but it's not coming out for like another year or so. Yeah. It's not coming out for a while, but. Like, this is a trailer. We're trying to give people a heads up. Keep an eye out for these movies whenever they come out. Yeah, because they're going to remember episode number, what, 14 or so going, 14. you know what? I remember Aaron telling me about that. They might. <laughs> I, I think it looks like a very interesting movie, and I think it comes out in January. Did you guys get an indication in terms of what the kid does? Or do they really not? Because from what I got, he does something horrible, but they don't really say what. Threw me off was the casting of John C. Riley. John C. Riley. Cause he, well, because he's always a comedic actor, and suddenly he's in this dramatic, you know, really dramatic movie, and I'm like, I keep waiting for something funny to happen, and nothing funny is happening. <laughs> it does start off where you kind of think it's going to be a comedy. Like, I kept waiting for Will Ferrell to show up the first, like, five seconds or so. Maybe that'll <laughs> it's happen. It's a strange-looking film, though. Yeah. It looks good. Okay. The next one is Dr. Seuss, the Lorax. Did I say that right? Yes. Okay. Because usually I can't get names correct. So we're going to go with Dr. Seuss the Lorax. It's about a little boy searching for something so he can get with the girl of his dreams. And then <laughs> to find it, he learns about the Lorax, which is like a little creature that fights to protect the world. And looks cute. It looks cute. I- it looks beautiful. I mean, that CG is some of the most beautiful animated film CG work I have ever seen in my life. Mm-hmm. And when I watched it, I anticipated gagging on all of the the sweetness and the 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 whimsy 
of the thing. And I ended up coming away from the trailer <clears throat> really looking forward to it coming out because I want to see it. It looks cute. It looks like it's a lot of fun. It looks gorgeous. And I was really, really, really impressed with what I saw. I, you know what I like best about it is because, you know, I do love Dr. Seuss, but I did not like how the Grinch stole Christmas or whatever, the Jim Carrey movie. Mm -hmm. So I like that they're doing yet another um, animated approach as opposed to trying to do an, yet another live action movie. So and, did you guys watch Horton Hears the Who? Because I didn't see that one. Yeah, it was very good. I thought it was pretty okay. well done. I need, to, I need to check that out. CG is definitely the way to go because, like you said, the Grinch stole Christmas and that goddamn cat in the hat bullshit. <laughs> Let's not do live action Dr. Seuss. Okay, let's stick to CG. It yep. works. Yeah, the CG stuff feels more Dr. Seuss than, who you know, the other the other two disasters. Exactly. So oh. It looks good. It's really cute, though. It does look really cute. And, but... it, and it's made by the people who did uh, Despicable Me, which I loved Despicable Me. So I'm really, I'm really, this one I'm pumped for in I... a strange kind of whimsy way. I actually am too because I love Dr. Seuss and I love the fact that they're doing it um, with extremely well detailed CG. So I'm really looking forward to it. I think it looks like a really good movie. The next one is Red Tails. Now, this is the George Lucas produced film, which is, I think it's about the Tuskegee Airmen. Um, mm -hmm. And it's revisited. I know there was an HBO movie a few years back, but this is hitting theaters. Uh, I think it, it looks really good. It's about. It looks, it looks really good. And the Tuskegee Airmen were a group of, of African American um, fighter pilots who basically mm -hmm. were not really well respected originally. Because during that time, you know, black people enlisted and they didn't really get any respect or, or anything. But they still fought and died the same as everybody else. Da da da, da. I'm not going to go on like a Martin Luther King march here or anything. But it's it's really nice to see that the film seems like it's treating that story respectfully while also having some pretty sweet action scenes. Yeah, from what I saw. the air battles look really good. They look awesome. I thought they I, – I don't know if it's – I assume it's LucasArts doing it, so – uh, Industrial Lights and Magic, whatever, but it looks great. Brian, what did you think? What was the, the James Franco movie uh, a few years ago where he was... Oh, uh, Flyboys? Yeah, which I kind of... That was one of those hangover movies where you kind of, you know, like I mentioned, what was it last week, where you just kind of lay there and it just happens to be the movie that's on and you're too lazy to turn the channel. But I actually got into that movie a little bit and that's what this reminded me of was because a lot of the, the CG and stuff that... the the dog fights and everything with the with the airplanes really looked it kind of reminded me of that and and it looks good it's got a lot of good actors in it so it looks definitely looks like a, something i'd like to check out okay well we'll be in line for that the last one last trailer and keep in mind that all these trailers are available on the hollywood outsider.com that's the hollywood outsider.com the last one is just came up today so if you haven't seen it yet boy, hot off the presses hot off the presses 21 Jump Street. That's right. I said 21 fucking Jump Street. It's got Channing, Ta Channing Tatum and Jonah Hill and they're cops that apparently look a little younger than they should. And they have to go back into high school. And fr from the trailer, they get really excited to go back to high school. They start having keggers and having a great old time. And they're obviously, they're not doing this respectfully at all. They're going straight for comedy. What did you guys think? I'll let Justin go first because he's most excited. <laughs> well, you know what's funny is I think I watched a half of several episodes of that show, even though it was on when I was a kid. It always seemed to me to be a show more for girls because it had Johnny Depp and some other characters. And a lot of girls I knew loved the show, but it, it never, you know, I didn't want to watch it, didn't care about it. And I may have seen, like I said, a half an episode of a few. Um, so really I had no interest in a movie based on this property. Um, but you sent me the, the link for the trailer and I watched it and, uh, I, I pretty much laughed my butt off. It looks really funny. And Channing Tatum actually looks appropriate and looks funny and not just the walking, you know, cardboard cutout that he normally is. <laughs> the ab workout just walking yeah. around. <laughs> Brian, you What's had, good? you had a different opinion. Well, yeah, actually, I was, I went in this with a roll in my eyes, basically, because I, all I, all I thought about was Starsky and Hutch, and 
how bad that was. And then I got to watching it. And I hate to admit this, but this looks funny as hell. <laughs> this looks really funny. And and really, it's almost like, according to the, the preview, you really don't even need the backdrop of 21 Jump Street. Yeah, you don't. I don't really. I mean, 21 Jump Street is kind of just a de facto factor. Really, it really isn't relevant. It, yeah, it looks like it, it just kind of stands on well, its own. But, maybe but if you against- didn't use it and you made a movie about a group of cops going into a high school posing as high school students, you would have everybody going, that's Jump Street. Meh, meh. So you're damned I, if you do, damned if you don't. Right. And I did hear that Johnny Depp is going to do a cameo in this. That would be fantastic. If he was like one of the teachers. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, and the captain in the uh, trailer is played by Ice Cube. Just Looks funny. It's just totally being ridiculous. It really does. It looks hilarious. Well... You can uh, you can obviously watch all of those at uh, thehollywoodoutsider.com dot com on our trailers for the current episode tab. Which would be your pick if you guys went and saw one of these? What's which one would you want to see the most out of what you saw? Uh, I'd say Red Tails. I'd have to go with Twenty One Jump Street. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> it burns me to say that, but I mean, I got to be honest it 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 blew me away. It blew away my expectations that preview, and that may you know maybe one of those movies where that's. The only funny parts in the movie is what's in the preview, but it it'll, it's enough to get me to go see it. So, Okay, fair enough. What about you? Um, I'm probably going to go with Red Tails. I don't know, the air battles, I guess, is what I want, uh, the words I was looking for, but it looks and great. To me, that's a big screen movie. That is a big screen movie, right. by far. I'm a big fan of that story. Um, historically, it's a very interesting story, and if they do it right, I thought the Tuskegee Airmen was a really good movie, but it was HBO and not many people saw it. So I would like to see a big screen representation as long as it's tastefully done. How's that? Yep. Okay. Um, we're going to hey, move on. What? what movie got first in the box office? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I you love... have the figures for this last week there, wow. there? I I do. God. Um, but now I'm kind of taken off guard. Uh, this, I suck hearing you say the name of the movie. This this week, <laughs> tops in box office, was Pulis in Boots. Um, that stars Antonio Banderas. <laughs> and it made uh, $34 million. $34 million. I don't know how you say that like a cat, but wow. <laughs> $34 million. I'll do that again. Uh, I won't. But uh, yeah. that's actually one of the biggest Halloween weekends, if not the uh, in history, I guess. Paranormal Activity 3 was number two. It dropped quite a bit. dropped like 65%. But it still made $18 bucks. That movie cost $5 million to make, and it's already made $80 million. So basically, and they're that's just... That's just U.S. Yeah, and that's just U.S. So you know they're just taking, like, dollar bills and just throwing them around the room and making it rain. Just, just nonstop. <laughs> like Scrooge McDuck. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Backstroke and third. The Rum Diary opened <laughs> and made $5 million. Five. Five million dollars. It's the one of the worst Johnny Depp openings in the last decade. So... That's funny. Um, I don't know if it's funny. I mean, it was kind of like his, he just did it because he was a big, he wanted to reward Hunter S. Thompson for his loyalty or something. I don't know. To, to pay homage to the guy or whatever. So it's like his love movie. Beads in his hair and some eyeliner. Yeah, pretty much. He was wanted to take a break from making money. So, you know, I'm sure it worked out for him. And, uh, in time, that's the Justin Timberlake movie open to 12 million. Speaking of, in time. I think I will review it since I saw it. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, so here's here's what it is. I'm going to kind of hit what the plot's about because it's kind of complicated. And they said the word time at least 64 times in the first five fucking minutes of this fucking movie. In the future, everyone that lives till 25 is genetically engineered to live, I, I think it's just more than one year. So basically, you hit 25, you get one year to live, right? To extend that life, you essentially have to work, beg, steal, inherit, whatever it is, time from other people. So uh, you go to work, you don't get paid at a, with a paycheck, you get paid with additional minutes or hours or days on your, your time clock, which is on your uh, your arm. Okay? You guys with me so far? I'm here. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. Neither one of you sound riveted so far. No, I'm I'm like... I really would like to understand I'm, the science behind this, but go <laughs> on. Apparently people are genetically engineered because population got out of hand, blah, 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 blah. So the poor basically scrape and literally live day to day. Ha, 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 get it? Day to day. And the uh, the rich can live forever if they really want to. 
Justin Timberlake is is Will Solace. He's basically this guy who has a really hot mom, named uh, played by Olivia Wilde, and she's what still looks like she's twenty five years old. Still has a bland nice. job, and they're they're basically just making ends meet. After some, he meets uh, strangers played by uh, I think it's Matthew Bloom or whatever. He's on um, White Collar on TV. Right. Yeah. Um, he's tired of living forever, so what he does is he gives all his time to Will. And then after a few unfortunate events, Will embarks on some mission to even out the playing field between the haves and the and the really wish they had, you know, the rich and the poor. And kind of he's make, a ninety nine percent, of course, because he's like, you know, he's one of the big shots now, and he wants to make it even. He wants to poor people to have just as much time as the rich people. Everybody should be able to live forever. Nobody should be forced to die. Dot da, da, da. You know, you've heard this fucking story a million times. Um, Cillian Murphy shows up as a timekeeper, quote unquote. Basically, what he does is set back any discrepancies, such as a poor guy suddenly being rich with time. And Amanda Seaf, how do you say her name? Seafried, Seafried, however you say it. She showed up as a close, social. Close enough. Yeah, I can never get names right. I, I don't know why I try. I'm gonna start calling them AS. AS also shows up as a socialite's daughter. She gets messed up with uh, Justin Timberlake, and I barely recognize her. Honestly, I didn't know it was her. Her hair is so short. Yeah, she looks good though. She looks hot. Mm. But I did not know it was her. And the whole movie, I didn't know it was her until the end. Um, so what did I think about it? It it's really hard to say that I liked the movie. The first five minutes, and you guys feel free to jump in if you have any questions or anything. But the first five to ten minutes, they beat you over the fucking head with this stupid time plot. Now, granted, I think it's kind of clever. Actually, I think it it works in the concept of the movie, but. They beat you over the fucking head with it. I can't count on how many times they made a, a bad joke, an innuendo, or a comment in, re- in reflection to time. You know, hey, I don't have time. Exactly. All the fucking time. <laughs> just nonstop. My God. It, would, it, it just kept going and going and going. Um, overall, the movie was just okay, I think. The time concept was really cool. If they wouldn't have fucking said it every 15 seconds. The actors, all really good. Justin Timberlake, I think, did a really good job. He's amiable, amiable. Um, A.S. did really well. Selena Murphy was awesome. He he nails everything he does. And the guy is the prettiest woman for a man I've ever seen. Who? Uh, Cillian Murphy. Oh. Doesn't he just strike you as like a, a woman? He, just he, had... always, he always looks a little odd. Yeah, he always... Me. He does. Yes, he does. Now, the guy who plays the rich bad guy... For, uh, and he's also on uh, Mad Men. Oh yes, you watch Mad Men. Yes, and he yeah. was also Angel's son in uh, right. Angel. Yeah, you watch that. yeah. Mm-hmm. Was he all right in it? He was okay. He plays um, As's dad. He he plays her dad. Be, right. But that's where you can get fucked up a little bit because people that are supposed to be like eighty years old look like they're twenty five. So I guess it's a really cheap way to hire young actors and make your whole cast look good. Um. It's, it, I don't know. If it would have been for the fact that they tried so hard to beat me over the fucking head with this clever concept they had, I probably would have liked it a lot more. But mm-hmm. they try way too hard to, to get you to buy into the plot, and then they don't really do much with it. I mean, it's no different than poor person wanting to even it up and just make sure that everybody has a fair shot in the world. That's really what it's trying to be. It's not really an action movie because there's very few action scenes. I mean, there's a couple, but they're very quick. Uh, it's more of a thriller than anything. I don't know. It, it just seems very by the numbers throughout most of the movie. And it felt like they had really no idea where they were going with the story. So, I mean, if I had to rate it, which I do, <laughs> overall, I think it's a decent rental. I don't think it's worth a full movie ticket. And if the full price of a of a ticket is 10 bucks, I'd give it 5 So, Damn. 5 out wow. of 10. Yeah. And... It was one of those movies where a bunch of friends wanted to go. So we're like, all right, let's go check it out. In time. Sounds good. And Scott. He, yeah. Scott's wife, actually. So he says. He says. His wife. <laughs> um, but then we got there, and I was actually looking forward to it a little bit. My wife kind of wanted to see it, but of course she would have rather seen Puss in Boots because it's uh, Spanish and she happens to be uh, Spanish. So uh, we got stuck seeing this shit. It's too bad the exposition is so heavy in the beginning and not to get all, you know, writery on you, but that's one of the topics that on my podcast we talk about, you know, quite often is 
how much information is enough, how much is too much, and how quickly, you know, do you want to start giving that information out there? Because there's a lot to be said for just giving people the bare minimum they need to get going and then just feeding it little bit by little bit as the story goes. It creates mystery and drama. There's nothing I hate more than to see a book or a film where the first five, ten minutes are nothing but here's what happened and here's the situation and we're going to tell you everything you need to know to move along. I think the only movie that had to do it and did it well was Fellowship of the Ring. Mm-hmm. You know, you're talking about a story that needed setting up and they had to do it. And so they did it, but they did it in a, in a fun, interesting way that didn't leave me feeling like I was just getting shovels of exposition shoved down my throat. I wish mo- more movies would be a little more minimal and how much they give. Cause we're s- hopefully most of us are smart. We can pick shit up as we go. Just get my feet moving. Don't front load it. I, I agree. You know, here's my biggest problem when I was watching this movie. And this is honestly how I felt. I felt when, whenever you watch a movie that beats you over the head with whatever that clever plot is, all I think is kind of what you're saying is why are you calling me stupid? Why do you insist on continuously calling me stupid? I get it. It's not nearly as complicated as you and clever as you kind of think it is. So, and well, the more details you give, quite often the more doors you open for logical logic problems and plot holes. If you just give me bare minimum, you give you and me a lot more room to not fall into those. Well, that doesn't make sense. Well, that doesn't make sense because I don't have enough information to start forming all these things that would cause me to, you know, see where you're leaving shit out. So that's another reason to kind of go really light on exposition. Hmm. Hmm. Well, it, I'll but, tell you. St- but to a certain extent though, don't you, I mean, you it's a fine line to walk because you've got to set up the rules of the, you know, of the, the universe or whatever that you're watching. Mm-hmm. You know, kind of like the Matrix. I think the Matrix did it pretty well. They didn't. They just, you know, they had a what was it? Maybe a five minute, four or five minute scene, or you know, where Morpheus kind of explains everything, and it's you know, you kind of you kind of figure out. All right, well, this is why, you know, I can all of a sudden know karate or whatever. Right. So it's <laughs> right. like boom, it's done, and and it's in the middle of the movie. Right. Exactly. And it's not just you know, it's not hammering you all through the movie. It's just okay, here, here's the rules, and now everything else is believable because we've laid it out for you. But yeah, it's, uh, I wish it was like that. It, it was, they tried, I mean, and granted, the, the concept is kind of clever. I actually thought once I understood it, once they stopped berating me and, and I actually got a, got a hang of it, it's kind of a clever concept. It makes no fucking practical sense. It, it's not logical in any way, shape, or form. And and whatnot, but because of the way they handled it, it just made it almost a joke. And I'll I'll be honest with you. I mean, I started making bad jokes. It's one of those movies where the movie wasn't fun, so I just started making fun of it. You know what I mean? <laughs> like one part, like a, a really pretty girl uh, dies, and Justin Timberlake is standing right over her. So I make you know, I'm just sitting there with my wife, <laughs> and I said, "She's sexy. Bring her back." I mean, just shit like that. That's just that's just how bored I was. <laughs> but you get it? Yeah. It's sinking in now, right? <laughs> she laughed. That's probably why she puts she's up with me. To you. She, she, she didn't have a choice. Yeah. Deep inside. She's yeah. like, you she's f- used to laughing. <laughs> <laughs> she's probably used to faking all sorts of shit. So just, <laughs> <laughs> you don't know how right you are. <laughs> okay. Well, that's in time. I give it five out of 10 bucks. If you want to go take a shot with it and go ahead. Uh, I went with about seven or eight people and we all kind of felt the same. So. Even Scott, who's never met a movie he didn't like, he wasn't really a big fan. So, um, Next on our podcast is we're going to kind of recap the movies that we talked about last week. So if you want to hear about these movies more in depth, listen to episode 13. We're just going to recap where, the, where those movies are that we talked about. Tower Heist is at 82% positive with critics so far. So it's actually doing really well. Mm-hmm. Um, a very Harold and Kumar Christmas has no reviews, which it's a weed comedy. It's not going to have any. And if you get them, they probably won't be very good. So, you don't think Ebert's going to sit back with a spleef and <laughs> he's just watch this. He's just firing up a bowl. Let me check this shit out. <laughs> Let me check this shit oh, out. It's God. medicinal, man. I've had a lot of heart problems. Leave it me is alone. medicinal, bitches. Yeah. Cancer. Killing, Bo- killing Bono. 
Uh, it's 56%. I wouldn't bother because that's an art movie, and art movies that get 56% are bad art movies. You just don't get it, man. Yeah, or I don't get it. It's very possible I didn't get it. <laughs> that's an IFC movie. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, the Son of No One, which was Brian's pick last week, is at 50%. Uh, Justin and I both picked Tower Heist. So blame it on blame it on me. I'm blame just it saying Tower Heist is at 82. percent I think I think you know where it's at. Obviously, we won. Yeah, obviously. If there's a contest, we won. That's right. So, like I said, if you want it more in depth uh, analysis, I like to call it analysis. It's more like a bunch of guys randomly fucking talking. Um, listen to last week's episode, episode 13, and we go in about those. I'm so stuff. glad you finished that with the word talking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, coming up uh, this next week, November 9th, is when J. Edgar comes out. It's actually coming out on a Wednesday. Um, <laughs> that's about the life and times of J. Edgar Hoover, the founder of the FBI. Leonardo DiCaprio is playing J. Edgar Hoover. have no idea if he cross-dresses. I don't know. Just yet. Reviews aren't in. But Clint Eastwood directs it. Uh, what do you guys think? Is this something you want to see? I do. Video. Video? Yeah. Just there's something about Leonardo DiCaprio. <sighs> he is so hit and miss with me. Uh, Titanic, loved. The Departed, didn't really care for. Shutter Island, didn't really care for. You know, but then he does a film like Inception, which is fucking insanely good. So I don't know. It just... It it looks all right. I'll, like I said, video. I'm I'm not excited. Brian, why do you want to see it? Historical reasons, or yeah, it's it's historical reasons. Yeah, J. Edgar Hoover is a kind of a guy that fascinated me, as far as uh, not so much as cross dressing ways, but uh, that's why I liked him. Just a, <laughs> it's just a guy that that that's really kind of intriguing. I mean, the guy created the was a CIA or FBI. Whichever FBI. CIA, right? Aaron said FBI. FBI. Aren't you paying attention? FBI. No, I'm, I'm looking at people of Walmart. Right <laughs> Maybe you should pay attention to the podcast. How about that? Why? <laughs> wow. Anyway, I told you we should ditch him. I know. <laughs> so anyway, I, I don't need a southern audience. He's a fast. He's a he's a fascinating <laughs> character, and that's a. Uh, that's just why I just kind of want to know a little bit more about it. He's not somebody that you, you really hear too much about. So, Okay, fair enough. That comes out the 9th on the 11th. This is when the sweaty movies come out. Um, <laughs> the what? The sweaty movies. One makes you sweat because it's a bunch of sweaty guys. One makes you sweat because of uh, fear. And the other one makes you sweat because you're so embarrassed that you actually paid money to see it. Okay. Um, you'll see. November 11th is when the first one is 11-11-11. It was originally supposed to be a wide release, but it's not going to be now. And it's about a, a guy, after the death of his wife and child, an author travels to Barcelona to be with his brother and dying father. Things get weird when odd occurrences start happening, as well as constant sightings of the number 11. And, you know, <laughs> this is what the poster actually says. Turns out 11, 11, 11 is not just a date. It's a warning. Nope. I'm pretty sure it's just a date. But... I don't think it looks that great, but it's the director of a couple of the Saw movies, so I don't know. Is that something any, either one of you want to see? I got a feeling it'll be on video in like two weeks. Yeah, video. Yeah, video. Yeah. Yeah, we don't need to really go in depth. Yeah. The next one is the one, and that's the one where you're supposed to be scared because, you know, it's it's supposed to be a horror movie. The next one kind of feels like a horror movie. Ugh. It's um Jack and Jill. Jack and Jill. Ugh. Jack and Jill. It just makes me sad saying it. I love Adam Sandler. I, I think Adam Sandler is funny as shit. I used to. Um, this is – Adam Sandler plays Jack, and then he plays Jack's sister, Jill. That's what I said. He plays Jack's sister, Jill. And it's apparently he's playing both roles, brother and sister. Sister comes over for the holidays, causes a bunch of chaos. Katie Holmes, for some reason, she martyrs herself to be Jack's wife. I don't, I don't fucking, why, what is the point of this movie? Well, this is another example, like we were talking about earlier, of an actor who used to do kind of edgy stuff and has since just segued his way into family-friendly material. And it's, it's another bullshit film that it's, I almost find myself being insulted by the trailer because it looks so dumb. Wow. You really feel, you feel strongly about it. Fuck this movie. 
<laughs> Put that on your poster. That's right. <laughs> For wow. Justin McCumber, fuck this movie. <laughs> I don't think that's going to sell tickets. So. No. Well, what do you think, Brian? Um, I'm not quite as passionate about it. <laughs> <laughs> It just doesn't. It just doesn't appeal to me, and I agree. You know, I don't. I don't know if he's really made a good movie since what Fifty First Dates. Wow, I disagree with that. But well, what's he made? What has he made? Well, what's, yeah, what's, I, what's he made? I liked Grown Ups. I laughed a lot in Grown Ups. Ugh. Ugh, it it was did. all right. Ugh. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't really good or nothing. What happened to Happy Gilmore? Why can't we get that back? You can't read. I you can't do Happy Gilmore again. That movie's fucking just genius. You could if you did it with Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> what? <laughs> or Punch Drunk Love. He did such a good job in Punch Drunk Love. He's somebody that just likes to give his fans what they expect. I don't well, his know. Fans, his fans are fucking idiots. I don't think his fans are cross-dressers. I don't really know where that came from. But I honestly think he's acting something out. A little, <laughs> little personal turmoil he didn't want to talk about. Movie uh, is therapy? Yes. And I just feel sad for him because I actually, I really like Adam Sandler a lot. And I like him better when he's angry. And he looks like he's going to be angry in this movie a lot. But I don't want to see him dressed like a woman. Or Airheads. Remember Airheads? Oh, jeez. He was fucking hysterical in that. Yeah, but that was before he was famous and like the most famous comedian alive. Like every movie he makes, makes a hundred million bucks. And if this movie makes a hundred million dollars, I'm convinced the Mayans were right. (laughs) Just saying. (laughs) The last one, and this is uh, <laughs> 300 Part 2. This is the one that will make you sweaty. Just watch a bunch of sweaty guys. It's The Immortals. I, uh, I figured you guys would gasp. Uh, it's about King Hyperion, who's played by Mickey Rourke, because that fucker's just working like nonstop now that he got nominated for an Oscar. Get it while you can. That's right, man. Mm-hmm. And he's doing every, every fucking movie he can find. He ravages Greece in search of the Bow of Aperius. Yeah. With with this bow, he can overthrow the gods of Olympus. I don't know how the fuck that works, but okay. I guess Zeus just gets, you know, you throw a bow at him. He's like, oh, shit. Um, after Theseus, it's a magical bow. <laughs> who's played by uh, the new Superman, which is Henry Cavill, loses his mother in one of the attacks. He vows revenge. And, of course, a bunch of peeps thinks he thinks he is the key to the king's destruction. And Stephen fucking Dorff is in this movie. What? How? <laughs> You know, I was with it, and I was watching the trailer. I'm like, I really want to see this. This looks badass. I can't wait to... Why the fuck is Stephen Dorff in my movie? <laughs> why is Deacon Frost in this movie? <laughs> why is Deacon Frost in this movie? <laughs> Stephen Dorff, you should not be anywhere near a big budget. <laughs> Lose any credibility at all. Exactly. I'm like, oh, 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 what the fuck? This movie looks like a sci-fi version of 300. It looks cheap. It looks cheesy. And I, I am not as insulted by this as I am by Jack and Jill, but <laughs> damn near. It just, it looks shitty. It looks like somebody wanted to make 300, didn't quite have the budget or the talent, and decided to do it anyway. And I will you know, not be seeing this movie. Yeah, you know, you know those movies that come out that kind of like, a, what is it, Paranormal Activity, right? Mm-hmm. You get You get the knockoff version. They right. go straight to Walmart. Right, right. So it's dollar being like abnormal activity or something like that. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, that's what this looks like, but it's just about you know five, six years too late or however long it's been since three hundred. So it just it looks bad, but there there is a there is a sadistic part of me that just wants to watch it and put myself through it. Um, I, and I hate to say that. Especially say that, you know, in a place that's being recorded. Yeah. This <laughs> is pure rental. I really like uh, Swords and Sandals flicks. I like Gladiator f- movies. Um, I you like, like hot muscle men all greasy. I greased do like and- sweaty, greasy men. I'm, I'm, I'm a fan. Exactly. exactly. Um, which is why you'd think I'd want to see Jack and Jill. But I don't. I don't. I don't. There's only so much cross-dressing I can take. But I do like Mickey work a lot. I don't really give a shit about the new Superman guy. Don't care about him. I Have really you seen him though. And the, uh, behind the scenes pictures that have been cropping up online from Superman. Yeah, Holy he looks shit. Good. Is that dude cut? He looks, I mean, he's a good looking dude, I guess. He looks like Superman. Yeah, that's cool. He should, I'll wait for that one. No, I'm yeah. just kidding. I actually kind of want to see it. And I did, you know, I, just cause I like this kind of movie and there's, 
J. Edgar looks definitely something I want to see, but I don't know if I want to see it like, oh, I don't have to see it right away. You know what I mean? I could see that in a few weeks or see it on video. I don't really care when I see it. I, do, I will see it eventually. Right. Three or Immortals, <laughs> I keep saying 300 because <laughs> it is fucking 300. Um, it's just one of those movies that if it's any good, I'm probably going to wait for critics reviews, but if it's any good, it's something you have to see on the big screen. If it sucks, it's something you want to avoid at all costs. And the fact that they cast Stephen Dorff is a big sign to me that it's just not headed in the right direction. Not headed in the right direction. So that's what's coming out. Um, November 9th. Seeing, it, seeing as how we're not immortal, I say we move on. Okay. Well, that's what I was trying to do, and then you interrupted me, jackass. <laughs> so coming out November 9th is J. Edgar. Uh, the 11th is 11, 11, 11. <laughs> okay. Jack and Jill and the Immortals. What is your pick of the week, Justin? Shit, of, of that lot? Of that lot. Of those four. Hi, J. Edgar. J. Edgar? Okay, Brian? Yeah, J. Edgar. I'm I'm probably gonna go with Immortals. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be the risk taker. I suffered through in time. Maybe I'll suffer through this one too. You take this bullet. We appreciate it. I will. I'll let you know. Well, that is that is it for movie news and uh, what's coming out. So let's move on to the idiot box. What's going on in TV world? First things first, American Horror Story. I don't know if you guys are fans, but it just got renewed for another season. It's coming back. Love it. Do you? Yeah, it's pretty good. Really? I really, I really, really like this show. Now, let me ask you, because I'm saving it kind of for a marathon. I'm going to watch, you know, four or five. I think it's, I think it's like four episodes now. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to watch them back to back because I really want to just see it as a lump. Does it, does it end at every episode or is it a serialized nature? How does that work? No, it's an ongoing, it's an ongoing story. Okay. Yeah, it's serial. Okay. So it's not, at the end of the episode, I'm not going to have an answer to whatever that episode's about. Right. Okay. No, there's no, uh, what do they call them? Those procedural? No, the, um, the little, little clips people would do to tell the public, public service announcements. No, there is no, hey, Johnny, here's why you shouldn't, you know, bully kids at the end of an episode. <laughs> and knowing is half the battle. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but it's good. No, it's quirky. It's cool. It, it's a little bit Twin Peaks, a little bit something all its own. Uh, I like the way the story is developing. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm a fan. It does a really good job of of answering like one or two little questions, but then giving you one or two others that makes you want to come back next week and watch it. So it's and Jessica real... Lange is awesome in it. She is. She steals pretty much every scene she's in. Really? How is uh, yeah. Connie Britton? Hot. Who? Connie Britton. She's the lady. She's the wife. The, the redhead. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah, she's okay. She's just always fucking pouting all the time. And I start getting a little annoyed with her constant look of, I'm about to cry. <laughs> she's gorgeous. Love her. And actually, she's a really she's a really good actress. She was in 24 for a quick few episodes. But she was in uh, Friday Night Lights. Who was she in 24? She was in season seven. She was one of the, uh, she was somebody Jack shacked up with. Ah, uh, okay. Hmm. So, I don't know. So, uh, people that are excited about that. Congratulations, you've got a second season. I will let Yay. you know as soon as I watch it, which will be before um, next week, because the plan is that next week we will talk about the TV stuff that we talked about a few weeks ago, kind of see where we're at, how we like those shows. Um, this little piece of news is something I could give one rat's ass about. I, I don't care. I just don't care. But a lot of other people do, and some people that listen to the show do. So Kim Kardashian, that gorgeous hot thing, who's dumb as a fucking rock, her marriage ended after 72 days, 72 glorious days of bliss, and apparently $10 million bought you 72 days. That's what it costs nowadays. Um, I don't care about this. My question is, do you think it was staged? Do you think the marriage was staged? I don't care. I, I know you don't care. None of us care. <laughs> None of us listening I care. I don't, think it, I don't think it was staged. I think, you know, now she, made a, she might have staged it. I don't think Chris Humphreys did. So I... I just think he was, he, he, he just basically is looking like an idiot right now. So whatever, it, whatever it's, she, it might be publicity for her, but I don't think it was his intent, but what, you know, whatever. Do you think it was her intent? Because I love the press, the press release that she released. I really thought this marriage was going to last forever and I gave it everything I could. I'm like, honey, you gave it 72 days. I don't, right. you know. <laughs> Not a lot of marriage counseling going on in <laughs> no. seventy-two fucking days. You know, uh, you know, there's 
people spend more time in rehab clinics. Well, <laughs> it's just, it's just great. It really is unfortunate that she is so dumb because she is exceedingly, exceedingly hot. She is gorgeous. She's she a, could she's do a 9. so 5. much if she weren't so dumb. She is a 9.5 easy. I, and unfortunately, she is an easy. It's 9.5 easy. She's just the tramp. Um, I feel bad for him because he he did a <laughs> he was on uh, TV and he's like, hey, I'm I'm committed to this marriage. I didn't. I'm, I'm okay. You know, it's obvious like he hadn't gotten the memo or something. I don't know. <laughs> I just think it's pretty funny. I, I also don't think it stayed. I think she might have staged a little bit, but I don't think he had anything to do with it. I think he's. Still I think her whole out. life is staged. Absolutely. I think the whole thing is just set up for cameras. She figured that would bring in some ratings. Maybe pretending to be pregnant or something. I don't know. Whatever. So that answers it. Our answer is A, nope, wasn't really staged on his end. And B, we don't give a shit. And C, she needs to do another sex tape. She does. And if uh, she's looking for participants, I'll do it <laughs> if she promises to boil herself first. <laughs> because she's had a lot of... And, uh, Just and, bathe her in Purell. And you know what? <laughs> I think maybe I think maybe I could keep up with some of her past. I'm just saying. I'm going I'm to give myself a little credit. So... <laughs> FX and DirecTV reached an agreement. I I know so many people were, that were fucking pissed off about this, that DirecTV was going to cut FX completely off their their network, I guess, because they couldn't reach an agreement. Are, are either one of you guys on DirecTV? Yeah. Yeah, yes. How did you guys feel about this as customers? I, I was sweating bullets. Seriously? Really? Well, he's a big Sons of Anarchy fan. Well, you are too. Well, so am I. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I you know, in the back of my mind, I knew that that a deal was going to get done, but the fact knowing the, I mean, there's there's when all of the the writers and and actors from these shows are coming out giving these little, you know, fifteen second spots about hey, call you know, check out this website. Here's what they're trying to do. That makes me worry a little bit. Now, I don't. I'm not saying that they were completely, you know, that I believe them completely. I'm sure they were. I'm sure if or Fox was and News Corp were at, probably asking for more than what DirecTV wanted to give. I don't think it was quite as bad as what DirecTV was making it out to be. I'm sure it was somewhere in the middle. And I, like I said, that's why I kind of figured that something would get worked out. But it did worry me that all these all of these people were coming out saying, "Hey, look, this is what DirecTV is trying to do. They're trying to, you know, blah blah blah, trying to make this more difficult. They're going to take these shows off, uh, you know, off your channel and." The thought of losing the last five episodes of shows like Sons of Anarchy, uh, American Horror Story, was mm-hmm. it didn't sit well with me. I guess it's understandable. I, I thought they were going to reach an agreement. I just, if they didn't, I would have felt really bad for the customers because I don't understand why they have this issue with just FX. It really doesn't make a whole lot of sense well, to me. Well, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't just FX. I mean, it was like 19 or 20 channels. There was, but FX is the largest one because it's got the most viewers for, <clears throat> for shows like Sons of Anarchy and, and American Horror Story and stuff like that. So, uh, National Geographic Channel was another one, and enough. But you know, the most, but the majority of them, I really didn't care because it was stuff like Speed Channel, um, maybe a couple of other obscure, you know, action sports or something like that stuff. So it wasn't stuff that I really watch. So, but FX was really the main one. If this had been a few years ago, I, I probably would have been more concerned. But um, because I do have an Apple TV device hooked up to my television and I use iTunes, any of these shows that I might have lost through DirecTV, I just would have picked them up through iTunes. So it, I, I knew I wasn't going to miss out on anything either way. Okay. Um, and real quick in relation to that, Charlie Sheen's – new comedy got picked up by FX called Anger Management, which is based on Adam Sandler movie. What? I wish I would have connected those earlier. <laughs> um, they, uh, <clears throat> I don't know why Charlie Sheen feels he still needs to work, but apparently he's doing 10 episodes of the show called Anger Management about him being an angry management counselor. He's basically playing the Jack Nicholson role and, uh, you know, whatever. I think Charlie Sheen. Yeah. He just needs to take the money and playing a counselor. Yeah. Anger That's counselor. why they call it acting. <laughs> He's playing an angry counselor, though. Maybe at some point uh, he'll beat his wife. I don't know. 
Um, last piece of news on TV in, and then we'll get into what we've been watching. In Living Color, you know, In Living Color is being revived. And I don't know why. But Is J-Lo going to be on it? I highly doubt it. I think oh, she's busy. Okay. She's going to be judging some some has-been music or soon-to-be <laughs> has-been music uh, singer. No, but Keenan Ivory Wayans will be involved. So that does make, I guess, it, some promise. Because if they can bring back even a little bit of the spark of that show, but I think it's time has passed. I really don't know why they're revisiting this. It's just a sketch comedy show. Because everything old is new again. Yeah, but are any of the way it's even funny anymore? No. No. Wasn't his son the one that was on that uh, pilot episode of uh, The New Girl or something? Uh, uh, yes, I think so. Uh, so that, was he a that pilot episode was funny, and he was funny in it, so. Yeah. Damon Wayans is always a funny one, anyway. I, I like Damon Wayans. He's really the only yeah. one I thought was funny. And Did Jim... you ever see uh, I'm Gonna Get You, Sucker? Yes. I'll suck your dick for some crack! Shit, I'll have to use that as a, as a goddamn flashback at some point. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great movie. I mean, it's bad, but it's great. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. So that's that. So if you're a big fan of 80s sketch comedy, then... Congratulations! You can you can re- you can watch it again, and that's the one that uh, Jim Carrey got started on. So we will find the next Jim Carrey, the next rubber face guy. Let me show you something. <laughs> <laughs> fire Marshal was it Fire Marshal Bill? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, good times. So with that, we're gonna go on to Did you see that? Which is basically where we talk about anything that caught our eye on TV this week. My first thought was Grim. Did you guys see Grim? Yeah, yeah. it was good. I thought it was really cool. I, I really kind of liked it. Yeah, you didn't you text me mm-hmm. about it? Yeah, and you you mentioned in your text that it had a a very kind of a Joss Whedon-y kind of feel. And, and I don't know if that text colored my perception or not, but I definitely agree. It it's very much feels like a Whedon-esque show. It feels like a Buffy. Yeah. Or, yeah, just with a dude. And uh, David Greenwald, who did, he ran Angel. For yeah. a large part of the time. I don't know if you guys... Brian, I don't know if you know much about those shows, but... Nah. No, nah, they're very nerd genre shows, but um, it very much has the feel of Angel, I think. Angelish. It's not so much Buffy. Buffy was a little more campy, I think, to some degree, where this is playing a little more straight. But the whole concept is, this guy finds out he's a cop, or guys have find he's a cop, and he finds out through his aunt, was it his aunt, mm-hmm. that um, he's part of the family of Grimm. The Grimm family, which basically wrote the stories years ago and everything else. And that there actually, there are monsters in the world and only the descendants of the Grimm, fam- Grimm family can see them. And and I think <clears throat> where it's going is there's obviously people in the fairies characters that he works with or that he knows that um, are trying to stop him from realizing this gift. And, and there's he runs across a werewolf, basically. Played by the uh, guy from Prison Break. I don't know his name, but... He always plays the weirdos. Yeah, he's the guy that always plays the weirdos. Um, and he kind of helps him out. He's one of the reformed nefarious types. You know, he's on a strict diet of decency. So, I don't know. I, I really liked it. I thought the the setup was pretty good. I mean, obviously, you can tell it's kind of a low-budget show. Um, I, I don't think it's it's really high dollar. Yeah, I thought it looked good. Yeah, no, it looks really good, but it definitely does not look like NBC is going to keep it. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't strike well, me as a show that NBC will keep. I hope the only thing because that's a good the, show. I, I I like. I really wasn't too sure of what to expect with it, but uh, I, but I liked it. It was the only thing that was distracting to me was the the colors. Every like every there was a lot of rooms and and sidewalks that were had this orange light and blue light and i'm just i know it's mood lighting and stuff and everything but it just it was like really it looked like a csi miami episode yeah parts something. of it did i think the only thing that distracted me was just how much the lead actor looks like brandon ralph he did i kept seeing i kept thinking that i too. did I'm i like, kept saying superman superman yeah. i'm like can't you just fucking kill him i mean you're superman you've got strong Dude. shit as long as they don't have green rocks in their teeth you're fine Brian, now, uh, Justin and I are obviously easily <laughs> maneuverable into the genre shit. Yeah. You, not so much. So, your take on it was, is it something you would like to see more of? 
of Grimm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I do. I mean, it's, I kind of want to see how they, how they play it out. Uh, I know it's the kind of like how I mentioned, there's always when something new comes out, there's always something else that competes with it. That's similar, kind of like once upon a time, uh, which I like just as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, it, but Grimm is darker and it's, it's pretty, it's, I like it. I was pretty surprised by it. I hope they, I hope they do keep it. And, uh, so yeah, it's, I'm going to keep watching as long as they're going to keep showing it. And as long as it's, it's somewhat entertaining. I think it's a heck of a lot better than once upon a time. See, I, that show think, is just dog bad. You're not, you're not liking where it's going. No. Well, and what, what, I think what is sinking it for me is the, the actress that plays the, 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 the lead bad girl. What's, what the f- very god the uh, fuck what the what is her name evil bitch the evil chicken black is such a terrible terrible actress and they give her these lines with words like shall and shit that just when she says it it comes off looking cheesy if they had gotten someone who could nail that part I think I'll be liking the show a lot more because I, I I really like the girl who plays uh, what Emma Emma Rose or yeah. what is her name the lead actress I right. like the little kid and I like a lot of the ancillary characters but that lead villain who is unfortunately half the fucking show she's terrible absolutely terrible if she would stand there silent with all that cleavage and that tight, you know, black pants they've got her in, that'd be fine. <laughs> but she speaks and it it sounds like shit falling out of her mouth. <laughs> and I am so disappointed with with her casting. She's awful. Brian, how awful. do you how do you I think he doesn't like her. What did you think? I I haven't watched like the, I have like three shows that I've got like several episodes to watch this, like this weekend. So see, I, I like it. And to me it's almost see but but I'm not really worried so much about her kind of over enunciation of certain words or what have you. <laughs> but, uh, I like it because it's almost like a where's Waldo game. And there's a lot of little things like there's a, there's a scene with, with the villainous. She's, you know, she's the, uh, the evil stepmother. She's uh, the wicked witch from snow white. Mm-hmm. And, you know, in the in the original Disney cartoon, she's got that that uh, white little queen crown looking thing that kind of, you know it's like a mask, but it but it kind of goes up in like this little triangle or yeah, okay. three three point little thing that I gotcha. a tiara, something like that. Kind I don't crown it, thing, kind of a crownish looking thing, right? Like like a crown like you'd see on a playing card or something. And if she she looks out of a out of a coach or something like that. And, and anyway, the, the door opening, the little window in the door opening, it's, it's, uh, it's got this white little border and it goes up in that crown thing. So it, it's the little subtle things I like picking up and it's, it's, it's got Robert Carlyle, Jennifer Goodwin, uh, from big love. Who's mm-hmm. really, you know, she's really kind of her star is rising right now. Uh, Giancarlo Esposito, who you may know from breaking bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's, he's the, uh, the voice in the mirror, Okay, you know, mirror, mirror on the wall. He's the mirror. <laughs> the mirror's got very baritone voice. Hey, he actually going? doesn't sound like the same character for, he certainly doesn't sound Hispanic. Right. So it's, it's good enough that I'm going to keep watching it for a while, but it, but both of these shows to me, they, they tread kind of a, a thin line because they, they both seem like they can just fall off the rails at any given episode. Yeah, I could see that. But that being said, this second episode of, of Once Upon a Time did just as well as the first one. And they say that's usually the first the first one that, that really kind of uh, signifies that it's going to be an early cancel. So they say it, it is, it's actually doing well. Oh, that's good news. Good news. Numbers, because... I think it's the better, more entertaining show. Okay. Well, um, before we move on, one last piece of TV news. We 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 all had kind of somewhat concern. I think Justin and I probably more so than Brian, but that Walking Dead when it returned was kind of just treading water a little bit. I mean, it was kind of doing a little bit too much filler episode 
versus moving forward. Like the plot didn't seem to be moving forward. And then the uh, the finale for the most recent episode <laughs> just happened, and I'm sold again. I'm back in love with the show, just like that. I mean, just to, the way it ended, and I don't want to spoil it because I'm sure there's somebody that hasn't seen that ver- that ending, but the way that they're taking the show and, and finally making a, a certain character a little little more dastardly than they were before, were you guys pretty pumped by that, or did it really not do anything for you? Oh, well, then I'm glad I didn't say it. <laughs> Did you see it, Brian? My wife and I like banking certain shows, and that's one of them. And then we'll just splurge on several at once over a weekend, kind of like what you're doing with Once Upon a Dime. Okay. I, I mean, I like it. Did you see the ending to the most recent episode? Yeah. Do you think that that's going to uh, affect the show for the rest of the season, you would think? Well, they've they've kind of been leading up to it. Towards the, like, I guess the end of last season. Yeah. Very, very, a little bit more subtle yeah. than, than, than what they did. Uh, but it's, I mean, I'm, it's one of those, I'm, I love the show. So I'm going to watch it. I'm not any more hooked than I was before, but it's, it's, yeah, I kind of like the way they're, they are taking it. Yeah. I, I was pretty, I was pretty pumped because I wasn't getting out of it, but I was definitely going, all right, you guys think I start moving forward. You're going to start losing me because, uh, and then we're like, damn. All right, back in it. So look forward to it, Justin. You're going to like it. I look forward to it. Okay. Well, with that, that is what we have for TV and movie news. Uh, We're going to play our game. Stump the Ho. Stump the Ho is our trivia game that we do every week where we basically ask a question. One of our podcasters asks a question, and the other uh, hosts have to try to answer it. And the whole object is for the person asking the question to stump us. And we'll take a quick break, a trailer break, which is basically where we're going to play 21 Jump Street, um, where you can leave, go grab a coffee, come back to this damn show, and then you can hear the answer when you come back from that. So, Brian, it is your turn to stump the hoe. What is your question? All right. Michael Keaton, who we mentioned earlier, Mm -hmm. was in the running for one of the lead roles in which of these recent franchises? Kind of taking a, a little page from one of Justin's questions a, a little while back. Okay. Uh, so Michael Keaton was in the running for one of the lead roles in which of these franchises? A, Transformers, B, X-Men, C, Pirates of the Caribbean, or D, Lord of the Rings? Justin, you can go first. Uh, what was that first one again? Transformers, X-Men, Pirates of the Caribbean. Or Lord of the Rings? Um, I'm going to go with that first one. Okay. All right. I'm going to go with Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, I, I think he might have been... I could see him as Jack Sparrow before they settled on Johnny Depp. Really? I could. Really? I could see them considering him. I, that's what it's supposed to be, right? I'm cons- You're crazy. I okay. am crazy. I'm crazy with a K. Whatever. Okay. Now, when we come back from a trailer break, which is going to be in a couple minutes, uh, we'll give you the answers to Brian's riveting question. Right now, we're going to take you on a trailer break, of, so you're going to hear the trailer for 21 Jump Street. Not so slim, Shady. What's up? Holy shit. I haven't seen you since high school. Hey, titty twister, titty twister. Stop! You're good at this, huh? Yeah. Test results, gentlemen. Such bullshit. You're really good at this. Yeah. Hey, you want to be friends? Fuck yeah, I do. Get ready for a lifetime of being badass motherfuckers. Oh, I am. God, dude, I thought this job would have more car chases and explosions and shit. No fucking way. If we could take them down, we'd be off park duty for sure. You guys, even real cops, would look like kids on Halloween. Hey, you want me to beat your dick off? You want to beat my dick off? I think what he was trying to say was he's going to punch you so many times around the genital area that your dick's just going to fall off. Hail the conquering heroes. We got our first bust. Yes! Yes! You forgot to read him his Miranda rights. Do you even know the Miranda rights? <laughs> Look, it obviously starts with, do you have the right to remain an attorney? Did you say you have the right to be an attorney? You do have the right to be an attorney if you want to. We're reviving a canceled undercover police program from the 80s. You idiots are officially transferred. Where do we report? Down on Jump Street. 21 Jump Street. 
You are here because you some Justin Bieber, Miley Cyrus looking motherfuckers. You will be going in as undercover high school students. Kids are weird these days. What the fuck are those things? You have exceptional muscle tone there, young man. Why'd you go through puberty? Like it's seven or something? There's a new synthetic drug at Sagan High. The mission is find a supplier. I think the dealers are the popular kids. We should start a party. That would be the quickest way to get in with them. Rule number one. Let's go. Don't give nobody no drugs, no alcohol. Are you two throwing a party? There's rumors in the Twitter sphere. I promise you we'll be super professional. All I do is party. Take it here so I know you're cool. Have fun. Are you guys on drugs? I don't like that. Just put your tongue back in your mouth. A lot of things that made me wonder about you. Your taste in music. The fact that you look like a fucking 40-year-old man. Let me check out your chest. Check out your test. After that shit you pulled yesterday, there's no way you could be cast, right? Will you go to prom with me? When did I get stabbed? That's awesome! Yeah! Why do you always jump across the car like that? Because it looks cool. You try. Uh, you okay? I think I shit my pants. And that was 21 Jump Street. So keep an eye out uh, when that comes out. I'm not sure. I think it's March 2012 when that'll be in theater. So look for that. We are going to get the answer to our stump the whole question from Brian. So, Brian, what one more time was your question? All right. Michael Keaton was in the running for one of the lead roles in which of these French recent franchises? Transformers, X Men, Pirates of the Caribbean, and Lord of the Rings. And Justin, you said Transformers, right? Yeah, for some reason I've got this weird memory of that but i could just be mixing up my movies and i said pirates of the caribbean which is so wrong (laughs) well justin you'll be glad to know that you were wrong oh fuck uh it actually was pirates of the caribbean what What? he was actually considered for the role of uh captain jack sparrow i like them apples Applesauce, uh, yeah. bitch. What? I knew it. I cannot believe that. You just bagged on him like 10 minutes ago about being <laughs> a 60-year-old dude running around <laughs> playing Beetlejuice. I didn't say and that. You th- and you think that he's a logical choice for Captain Jack Sparrow no, to be considered? I didn't, I didn't say that I thought. I said I could see Hollywood considering him for it because he has played Beetlejuice and he's played a lot of wacky characters. And Captain Jack Sparrow was yeah. supposed to be a little wacky. Yeah. You know, I could see Michael Keaton before I could see Johnny Depp before Johnny Depp, you know, did it. Now that he's done it, I mean, I can't see anybody with Johnny Depp. But before Johnny Depp did it, no way would I have thought Johnny Depp. <laughs> no fucking way. <laughs> I mean, we said kind of the same thing back when the original Batman was coming out. or And they said, yeah, Michael Keaton's going to be playing Batman. Nerddom everywhere was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I remember standing in that line for that fucking movie going, no. <laughs> and he, he and was all right. He did a pretty good job. He did all right. Yep. He did better than Val Kilmer. I can tell you that. Um, Who do you think was worse, Val Kilmer or George Clooney? I actually like George Clooney's Bruce Wayne. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. I didn't like He's his Batman. Yeah. He 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 does he does rich douchebag well. So. He just didn't need the bat nipples, you know. No. You know what I'd like to see George Clooney do? Not to get way off topic, but... I'd love to see him do another um, f- From Dust Till Dawn movie, like that character. <laughs> yeah. That would Didn't rock. Like Gordon Gecko? Yeah, or... Gordon Gecko. Seth Gecko. Seth Gecko. Seth. One of them. Yeah, so good. Gor- Gordon Gecko was... Yeah, he's Wall Street. Good right, call. Wall Street. <laughs> <laughs> but that whole neck tat and shit that he had in that it's movie was badass. Really cool. I wanted that tattoo for so long, and then I realized, really, no chicks are actually going to like that, except chicks that I probably don't want to hang out with. <laughs> but I remember seeing that in theaters and that the scene with uh, Selma Hayek. Yeah, where the whole theater dancing, went quiet. Could have heard a pin drop in that theater. Yep. Every dude just <laughs> jaw 
on the floor, no, myself included. Nobody was chomping on popcorn right now. Like, nobody, shit. nobody. This is, Quietest this is... I've ever, ever seen in a theater before. Okay, well, moving wow. on. Now we're going to go into our from the outside in topic, which is basically a topic we discuss every week. We take a, a few minutes and kind of just go over something either that is on the back of our minds or on some of our listeners' minds. This week, uh, Dustin, who's who's he guest hosted once a few weeks back, but he had the suggestion. He asked uh, me, and he asked me if we'd ask him on the show, and I thought it'd be a good idea. His question was, what low-budget films, like maybe that had a great story, um, could have been a hit or could have been a better movie with just a, a bigger budget? Like the only thing they were missing was, you know, a few extra bucks in the pocket. The story was great and everything else, just didn't have the money to make it happen. That was a pretty interesting, uh, interesting question. So, hmm. Brian, why don't you? What do you, do you have any thoughts? What do you think? What's the first thing that pops in your mind? There was a movie that came out what one or two years ago called Monsters. I don't know if either either of you guys saw it, but it was a uh-uh. it was about a girl that was trying to get back from uh, from Central America. Basically, there it was. A, it's just kind of a sci fi movie. Oh, aliens yeah, aliens yeah. have have landed basically and infected base Central America basically. And it's central, uh, basically Mexico and a couple other countries are this hot zone, and you're supposed to stay out of it. Well, she's on an assignment uh, down in I don't know Panama or El Salvador, and she's trying to fight her, you know, get her way back to the states. And she teams up with a guy, and they in the movies about their struggle to get back to, uh, you know, basically back across the border. Um, but it was really good. They're just it's just nondescript actors. It's kind of like Cloverfield or some of these other movies where you don't really see the aliens very much. Uh it's got a little bit of a it's not so much of the the found footage or the documentary style, but it looks like, you know, it's just one of those that that if they had a little bit bigger budget, I think they only made it for about like five hundred thousand dollars or something oh, really? like that. It, yeah, it's and and it looks great for a five hundred thousand dollar movie, <laughs> but you know, with a little bit more backing, I think this movie really would have been, uh, really would have been something special. It's interesting because I've I've never I mean I heard I think I've heard of that movie and I think you might have actually mentioned it to me, but I haven't seen that. But like, what kind of budget do you think it would need? Like twenty, thirty million bucks? Or are you talking like a hundred million dollar movie? No, I mean no, not if you were if you were going to have the aliens as a major part of it, then you, yeah, you would probably get up into that hundred million dollar range, but even what 10 million, I know that sounds like, eh, yeah, just 10 million. That's ridiculous. But even, you know, some 10 to 10 to 20 million would have been, you know, more than ample. So yeah, fair enough. What do you think, Justin? It's a question that I don't quite often consider because usually I find myself wishing movies had, Big budget movies had less money mm-hmm. because I think a lot of times studios will use money in place of effort or in place of talent. And some quite often people who have less to work with work better, work harder, work smarter. And so most low budget movies I find would probably have been even would it would have not benefited from more money in the sense that it would have f- screwed with the the vibe and the feel of what they were going for i mean it great it would be great if the actors were paid a bit more money you know but you know the studios don't pay big money to make sure the you know a low budget films actors are paid more they would want to put all that money up somewhere else on the screen and so it's not one that i've really thought about it. I, I i wish more movies would have less money thrown at them because you're going to find more ingenious ways to do things and an interesting way to do things but you know if, if push comes to shove and a, i think of a movie that i wish had gotten more attention and maybe a little bit more money, maybe something like bubba hotep oh yeah you know there you go it's it's a great film they do the best they can with the money they've got and i think the film as it exists is a really wonderful film but you kind of wonder, okay, if they had a few more dollars to throw at some special effects or makeup or whatever, what what might they have done with that and, and what could have been thrown up on the screen? But really, 
I don't necessarily find big budgets ne- equate quality. I thought money is far too often just a a, a proxy in in place of something better, whether it's talent or, or effort or elbow grease. Um, I, I had a thought. Uh, one of them was was Dog Soldiers. I think is a is a good low budget movie, but mm-hmm. I, I some of the special effects you know were kind of lacking in some areas. And and I think that's that's one where I, I would have really liked to see a few. I few would agree bucks. with you. I know I hammered that movie yeah. a couple of weeks ago, but I would I would agree with you on that. If that movie had a little bit bigger backing, that would have been a little bit more entertaining. Mm-hmm. See, and, and that's something I definitely would like to see. And the one that I that really came to mind, and this is going to sound silly at first, but hear me out. Um, I th- this is probably one of my favorite comedies. But the one thing that always sticks out to me whenever I watch it is the special effects. And I think if it would have had just a little bit more money invested in it, it would have been damn close to a masterpiece. And that's Dogma. Um, Kevin Smith's Dogma, which I think is a genius movie for the most part, uh, story-wise, story and dialogue-wise, minus the ship monster. They could just kick that out completely, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Um, that's the only part of that movie I would kick out, but everything else works great. But the special effects were really, I mean, you could tell it's a low budget movie and you could tell Kevin Smith didn't have either the eye or the, or the budget for the, for the right special effects. So if, if they just threw a a couple million for that, I think that movie would be damn near one of my favorite comedies of all time. Would those special effects have gotten rid of Linda Fiorentino and filled her space with an actually good actress? You mean someone who wasn't filled with hate? Oh God, she's. I tried watching that movie again <laughs> a, a, about a month ago, and I I couldn't make it through it, and all because and you know I I, I don't want this to turn into the Justin's bashing actresses <laughs> episode, but she was fucking awful in that movie. She looked like she wished she was somewhere anywhere other than where she was. Well, I think in the every cons- line delivery was crap. Her performances were crap, and she she single handedly ruins that movie for me. Well, with a bigger budget, maybe they would have hired a different actress. I know Kevin Smith has gone on the record and said that he wishes he she he didn't cast her. Oh, he hated her. But I don't think, for me personally, she doesn't take away from the movie. I mean, her part is kind of uh, very even keel, mellow. Da 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 da. She's supposed to be the one normal character out of this crazy bunch. But Matt Damon and Ben Affleck. Save that film, Matt Damon. Because they alone. are Matt Damon awesome alone in that movie. His his little movie speech. Oh God, that's so good. <laughs> <laughs> I could watch that a hundred times over, a hundred times over. So yeah. that's that's one that I I was thinking of. I mean, a lot of movies. Um, so, I I mean, other than other than hiring somebody other than Linda Fiorentino, what what do you think the more money? I mean, the special, special effects, effects because because a lot of the stuff? effects near, especially near the end. I mean, you've got a lot of um, heaven on earth and that sort of thing. I mean, uh, the end of the world coming to fruition, right. and you can just tell that this was made on somebody's street. And they're just throwing like little cheap ass angel wings that they got from the Holly, the Halloween store down the street. They're just throwing them in the street and throwing some some syrup on them, you know, trying to bloody them up. I mean, it's just the part of the movie that takes me out of the movie is that part. Um, I'm with it. I'm, I'm on board. The ship monster really kind of throw me. I wish, yeah, I really wish Kevin Smith would have enough decency to take that out of the movie because it really doesn't add anything to it. It's fucking stupid. But yeah, but that's <clears> the whole <throat> scene with I, Selma Hayek. Yeah, well, if you could put something, be, I guarantee you, I could cut that, have that whole scene where she's half naked, and still get rid of the ship monster. But right. you know, George Lucas it. Yep. Maybe George Lucas. Maybe I'll send it to him. He'll fucking do it. He's he's a god when it comes to fucking up existing films i'm sorry <laughs> so the what i would do is would would just add to those those scenes and in terms of the angels flying you would actually get to see them fly as opposed to just the shot of ben affleck and his wings that don't move and then when they do move it looks like it's a guy behind him just wiggling them you know cause that's how it looks just the special effects of the movie are pretty half-assed it, w- it would be nice to have a budget that supports it because the dialogue and the scenery and the acting outside of Linda Forentino is spot on. Like everybody in that movie is is hysterical, except Linda Forentino. In fact, uh, Jenny Garofalo should have played that role. But oh yeah, uh, yeah. compared I, I to like Linda, in that. she I was think... actually in it for what one scene. Yeah, she did really good for the yeah. Two yeah, minutes. she's fine. Two minutes. 
Anything else you guys can think of? What about Justin? When you said movies that were a little big budget that you wish had had less, what's the first thing that came to mind? Oh God! Well, well okay. Say like Green Lantern, for example. Oh, okay. Yeah, I I did enjoy the film, but the the there were a lot of scenes that were just there. There was too much CGI on the screen. I think there's a lot of things that that could be done practically that weren't done because oh we'll just do it in post we'll do it later we'll have CGI come in and fix it. I, I wish they had done a bit more on the screen. Some of those characters had been real and not just complete you know computer fabrications. And I think that's one of the reasons a lot of people may have gotten turned off to it because there was probably as much CGI in that movie as any Pixar feature has. Mm-hmm. And for some reason mass audiences seem to resist live action films that are just oh, just dripping in CGI. That makes and sense. you know as much as I like um oh god I completely blanked on his name. Okay. Ryan Reynolds? No, Mark, I'm sorry. Martin Transformers. Bruce? Oh, Michael Bay. Michael Bay. I I I will always be one of the Michael Bay defenders out there. I think that he does what he does. When you remember his name. Right. Extremely <laughs> well. And I love almost, almost everything he's ever done. But I think with the Transformers movies, they gave him so much money that he just goes overboard. And he's using every penny to make this movie that's a little longer than it needs to be a little more complicated on the screen than it needs to be. And I, I wish more stops were in place in front of him to, to arrest some of his excessiveness. That's one of the things I like about Robert Rodriguez. Well, at least his earlier movies was if you watch his movies with the, the commentary on it, you know, he'll tell you how they, they did some of the special effects, stuff like that. You know, mm-hmm. Some of the exploding heads or, especially from dusk till dawn is a really good one to watch because he really goes into, you know, they, they didn't have too much of a, but you know, they had a decent budget because they had some decent actors in it, but generally speaking, it wasn't that big of a budget, but you, it forces the director to get creative for the special effects and to tell the same story that he would, you know, he would, that he would normally tell if he had say, you know, double the budget or more. Yeah, I, so. he's somebody that can actually make a low budget movie and make it look like it's not low budget. So, Rod, Robert Rodriguez, Quentin Tarantino, yeah, he I can mean, do it too. Look at look at what was it, El Mariachi? That was something like ten thousand dollars he made that movie for. Well, and then you look at a movie like Paranormal Activity. <clears throat> what if they had tried to make a Paranormal Activity movie, but instead of only paying fifteen thousand like they did for the first one? You know, they, they spend 15 million and they put in some little CGI'd ghosts moving in a corner or some bullshit that yeah, really t- all that it does is take away from <clears throat> the, the beauty of what that movie created for such, for, you know, for such little money. But how many of these movies with the, with these semi large budgets? how much of that budget is going towards marketing and how much of it is going towards actual film production? Well, and that was, I think a part of what Kevin Smith was kind of railing against with red state when he decided that he was going to promote that movie and distribute it kind of himself for a while as he, he never under He said that he couldn't understand why a 20, you know, or $25 million movie would have a $50 million marketing budget. What is the point? Where is that money going? Why are, why are you suddenly, cause see when a movie, say a movie's $10 million and they spend 20 million to market it. Well, now in order to make that money back, you can't just make the 10 or 20. You can't just make double what it costs. You have to make back all that marketing budget. And so it's the stupid system that Hollywood's got to promote their films and, and just really ratchet up the cost of these movies. We live in an internet world. You don't have to have all these expensive marketing budgets. Fucking put it up on Facebook and YouTube, done. Yeah. Yep. That's true. Did you guys see that movie Primer? Primer? Oh, oh God. That was a f- head fuck of a movie. No, I have yeah. not. What is that? These these two guys inadvertently 
figure out how to go back in time. There are a couple of engineers or something like that, and they create, they're create creating this thing, and, and they do it by accident. But they only go back in time, say, a few hours or earlier in the day. Okay. And and so, it, of course, you know, that creates some problems, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. But they only made the movie for $7,000. You know, the, the guy that – the guy, what was it? He directed it. He was the – produced it, edited it. Uh, he was a co-star. You know, in the credits, I remember in the credits, his it says uh, Cater Services, you know, and it was like the director's mom. Or, you know. <laughs> the director's <laughs> and, mom. Yeah, you know, they used like friends' houses to shoot some of the, you know, the, the movie and stuff like that. So, but it was like $7,000. But this is a really good, it's kind of a cult cult movie. It's it's a bit slow, but it is a kind of a head fuck of a movie. But for considering the budget and everything else involved with it, once I learned a little bit more about it and, you know, the behind the scenes stuff with it, it really made me a bigger fan of the movie. Well, I mean, you know, a lot of people give Kevin Smith a lot of shit because he is constantly marketing. He's pushing his material. He's promoting, promoting, promoting. And I can understand why people get tired of that. But these actors, I mean, these directors who not only direct it and they write it and they edit it and they do so much, they're so invested personally and professionally in these movies they can't help but, you know, want to get out there and, and push what they do as hard as they can because they don't have these in these in huge marketing machines behind them to do all of that work for them. And they kind of don't a lot of them don't want that interference because as soon as the studios come in with their money and their marketing, so much of that stuff is taken out of your hands. And yeah, you know, there are some directors, probably like Michael Bay, who are more than content to come in, make a film, and then, you know, jet out to whatever, you know, exotic locale and hot women he's got. But there are other people who are more personally invested, don't want to spend a lot of money, and they do so much with every dollar they've got. So big budgets are not, I, I think, what really determines the quality of a film. Fair enough. Uh, I do think that sometimes when you get that low budget, you will work a little harder to achieve whatever it is you're trying to do. And if you have too much money, you might go a little crazy. Like, I think Chronicles of Riddick, they, as much as I love the movie, I think they, they probably had too much money. Yeah. Cause they as much as turned... I love Van Helsing, probably yeah. the same thing. <laughs> that was my one <laughs> argument with that movie. But every time I mention that I have the problem with it, you guys yell at me. So I'll just <laughs> leave it alone. <laughs> so I love that we... movie, but there's way too much money on that screen. <laughs> yeah. We you both, say? you know, so we know Dustin, and we know that he doesn't have good ideas like this very often. Uh huh. So, um, what did he give any recommendations as far as uh, low budget movies that he did? Apparently, he was just having random thoughts and didn't feel like elaborating. I think he just wanted us to uh, to let him know, so he had something to talk about. Oh, which okay. is cool. That's what we're here for. Um, <laughs> with <laughs> with that said, thank you, thank you, Dustin, for the idea. I think it was a very interesting idea. If anybody else has a topic idea or something you want us to talk about, I think I just said idea. I didn't mean to. Um, please email us at feedback at thehollywoodoutsider.com. That's feedback at thehollywoodoutsider.com. Any topics that are serious and not trying to make fun of us, we'll more than happy to uh, take under consideration. We do that enough ourselves. Exactly. Next week, we are going to revisit the fall TV edition that we discussed a few weeks back and kind of look at where uh, the shows that we were looking at are in terms of, you know, if they're worth a shit or if we should have just never watched them to begin with. So tune in for that one. That'll be next week. We're going to move on to the couch where we talk about DVD Blu-rays or as Justin likes to refer to them, there are no fucking DVDs. There are only Blu-rays. So that's right. Fuck DVD. That's right. Just kidding. <laughs> um, here are the new releases that are coming out November 8th. The Change Up, that's the Jason Bateman and Ryan Reynolds uh, body switching flick. That's coming out. Atlas Shrug Part 1, which is some low Ugh. budget flick on capitalism, I think. Ugh. Yeah. Fuck Ayn Rand, that hypocritical bitch. What? <laughs> tell, tell me what your thought is on this. <laughs> no, the woman who wrote Atlas Shrug, Ayn Rand, you know, she's constantly pushing this idea of, you know, man being responsible. For himself, governments getting in the way, uh, the government's entitlement programs creating weak people, blah, 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 blah. Come to find out the damn bitch had been taking money from the government for years. She's a hypocrite. 
I can't stand her work. I can't stand her philosophy. And these people who buy her bullshit, I really just can't stand them either. So there you go. And Rand, screw her. Okay. Well, I had no desire to buy it, but I definitely won't now because I think it'll make Justin hurt me. It'll make me mad. Yeah. I'm not going to buy it. I promise. Uh, 13, which is a Jason Statham and Ricky work because the fucker will take any paycheck at this point. Straight to video flick about Russian roulette cage matches. I don't know what the hell this is, but, um, Jason Statham's kind of playing it straight. He's not really doing the he's action role game. in this one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No action? Well, it's not in a cage fight. No, maybe? no, no. He's, it's an action ish flick. People are doing like Russian roulette all over the place, but he's not like a- kicking ass left and right. Oh, then forget it. Yeah. But Mickey works in it and taking his paychecks. I'm sure he's doing, bringing something to the table. Uh, Life in a Day, that's a National Geographic documentary on a day in the life of everyday people. Yeah, that sounds fun. <laughs> I do that. <laughs> I do it's that. It's my life. Every day. Every, Every day, day, it's a life of my day. Um, Alleged, which is about a reporter who gets involved in a trial of the century, and he's, while he's trying to get in the big leagues, he gets in over his head, learns some. Sometimes you have to lie to get to the truth. That's actually what it says in the fucking box. Matthew McConaughey star in it. Yeah. What's that? Matthew McConaughey star in that. He does not. If he did, I might be interested, but he doesn't. And then on November 11th, because this is one of those fucking Friday things where they have to have it open on the weekend, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. That is the ending to Harry Potter where Ron Weasley does not die. So out of those, what are you guys' pick of the week or purchase of the week? Harry Potter. Harry po- all, I'll be happy to own this one. Are you going to get it on Blu-ray? Why are you even asking that? Because <laughs> I'm stupid. <laughs> Duh. Uh, Brian, what would be your purchase of the week out of those? Yeah, Harry Potter. But I, I think I want to wait and kind of find this uh, whatever super deluxe box set. Of so. like all the movies? Yeah, just get them all in one big pretty case and stuff so they're all like neat on the shelf fair enough but i only need one movie i've got all the other ones so why do they make those i mean like at some point do they think the people that love i exist and they know that i am a sucker (laughs) who will buy them i had all three pirates of the caribbean movies on individual blu-ray when they came out with the box set with all three i sold mine off and i bought it lost money in the process (laughs) but fuck it that's who i am okay i I get that but but what I don't understand is is when the when part when Harry Potter part seven point one whatever it was the first half of this last movie that came out you could buy a box set with those seven or eight movies however many was in there right. knowing knowing that there's a part two I mean what is what's the point of that uh, I'm not that dumb I knew to wait <laughs> <laughs> so anyway Harry Potter would be my selection also okay it would be my selection too I I really want to get the I'll get the Blu-ray on this one. I got the part one in Blu-ray, so I'll get part two in Blu-ray and call it a day. I do want to rent the change-up, though. I do want to see it. Yep, it looks pretty good. I mean, I know it didn't do that well in theaters, but that doesn't mean it's a horrible movie. So that's what's coming out on DVD in Blu-ray. Um, with that, we every week we try to have a, a flashback, which is a, on a, an obscure or unknown movie that we mention, that hopefully... When you leave this podcast, you'll have something that you can go watch and, and kind of enjoy. So this week, it's Justin's turn to kind of explain what his flashback is. So here's your chance. Sell your movie. All right. Let me see if you can pick out what this movie is <clears throat> from some of the cast. Okay. Thomas Hayden Church. Jamie Kennedy. Sideways. Oh. Fuck. Can I get at least two names out? <laughs> two names. <laughs> Jamie Kennedy. Jordan Ladd. Rob Lowe. Uh, and that's why I'm talking about this movie. No one ha- but me, I think, has seen this film. Came out in 2000. Written by James Gunn, who probably a lot of you don't know. I know who James name. Gunn. You, you might. Uh, some of our yeah. listeners though, may not. Mm-hmm. He most recently did... Um, that film with uh, that film with the guy. I hate when people say that. Yet I'm saying <laughs> it. The guy from the office, Rain Wilson. Okay. Okay. What was that movie that just came out? Anyway, Super. 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 Yep. Thank you. And he also did Dawn of the. He wrote Dawn of the Dead, and he directed Slither. Right. Yeah. 
He did those. He also did the amazingly funny series of PG porns, one of them starring my man crush, Nathan Fillion. (laughs) But back in 2000, he wrote a movie called The Specials. And I think that this movie, unfortunately, came out too close to Mystery Men. And so it's yet another one of those examples of similar type films coming out fairly close together and one of them suffering for it. This one suffered for it. Um, The Amazon.com description for this movie is, how do you get to be a special? You go to special school. The jibes one endures when a part of the sixth or seventh best superhero team in the world. The strobe, who's played by Thomas Hayden Church, has become vain and self-absorbed. His frustrated wife, Miss Indestructible, by played by Paget Brewster, has gone looking for love in the arms of the Weevil, played by Rob Lowe, and sex-mad blue-faced punk uh, named Amuck, played by Jamie Kennedy, is getting bored with being a good guy and longs for his supervillain days. Uh, when he could sneak a cigarette without publicity fallout. The team is like a bored group of kids stuck indoors on a rainy day, uh, and inaction and frustration has led to backbiting, infighting, love affairs, and long-held grudges. The hilariously disastrous unveiling of their action figures was such accursed, or <laughs> such abused accessories as a giant meat thermometer <laughs> is the final straw. The specials are no more. Uh, it's... A f- very funny, low budget. I mean, this movie had no budget, which is probably another reason why it didn't do as well. Um, but it's it's very funny. It's a, a, a tightly done film with all of these characters that have special powers, and yet they're just the sixth or seventh best team in the world, constantly suffering from, you know, that lower stature. Um it's not on Netflix instant streaming, unfortunately, nor is it on Blu-ray. I, it's one of the few DVDs I have allowed myself to hold on to because it is now You've slumped. A, a format beneath me. Yes, I slummed for it. Uh, it. It's really funny. It's enjoyable. And if you like movies about superheroes, especially if you like movies about down and out superheroes, I highly recommend you checking it out. Uh, and it is called uh, The Specials. Okay, and that's the Ooh. specials. And also, that is our podcast. You know, every week we, we do a topic, and we try to give you a heads up on what the topic's going to be. And last week we didn't know ahead of time. But next week, as I said earlier, we are going to talk about the shows that we mentioned a few weeks back. We're going to look back at them and see how they turned out. That's going to be on next week's episode, so please tune back in. We'll also talk about the week's releases from November 18th. You can also find us anytime you want at thehollywoodoutsider.com. If you're looking for either information on, on the podcast, trying to find older, older episodes, you want to watch the trailers that we talked about, go to thehollywoodoutsider.com. That's where they're going to be. You can like us on facebook.com forward slash the Hollywood Outsider. You can email us with any flashbacks that you want to talk about, topics you want us to talk about, or basic general questions or concerns or thoughts you have at feedback at the Hollywood Outsider.com. And you can also tweet us or twat us or whatever you want to call it at hate H underscore outsider. That's how you find us. Justin McCumber, I want to thank you for being on. He's also the host of the Dead Robot Society podcast. Thanks for being here again, yet again. <laughs> week in, week out. Uh, Brian Williams, he's host of nothing. He's got nothing going on. Nope. Nope. Basically, he just hangs out. I don't know. What do you do? Yeah, I just, yeah, just kind of um, jump on this stupid podcast. Exactly. <laughs> so he hosts the Hollywood Outsider podcast. And Scott Clark is still in school. He'll be back at some point. We don't know when. Well, you know, if he ever graduates. With that, do you guys have any parting thoughts? Any Any concerns, thoughts, words? I do. I do. Okay. Uh, real quick, <clears throat> just as a public service announcement for everybody who may not know, I, I know I talked with Aaron mm-hmm. about this before we started recording, but I thought I'd mention it now. Um, this month, there is a, um, what would you call it? Not an event per se, but it's, there is a, a movement afoot called Movember, which is, was started in Australia and has since gone worldwide. And it is a month where we recognize uh, male-specific cancers, like testicular cancer, prostate cancer. Um, that The gist of the movement is that those men who wish to, and of course are follicularly capable of it, shave off all of their facial hair November 1st 
and throughout the rest of the month, try and grow out the most luxurious, prettiest mustache possible <laughs> in hopes of promoting the movement of Movember to promote people donating money um, to uh, helping find cures for uh, these male specific cancers. Uh, I have usually my face is, is garbed in a nice little goatee that my wife prefers that I keep on. Um, but I have shaved it. And of course now I face her constant jokes of does my mother know where I am? Because with the loss of my goatee, I'll also lose about 10 years off of my face. And I much prefer the older statesmanly look that my goatee statesmanly tends look. to do. Yes. Wow. So I'm now shorn. And through this month, I will try and grow the nicest mustache that I am capable of growing, though I am afraid it will turn out looking more like a Uncle Touchy's Puzzle Basement sort of <laughs> mustache. <laughs> We'll see how it goes. Uh, but I am hoping that people who listen to this uh, will take a look at it and will hopefully want to uh, donate some money to it. If you do feel so inclined, whether it's a dollar, whether it's five bucks, whatever you want, uh, you can actually go to, and hopefully Aaron will include this in our show notes. Um, if you go to HTTP colon slash slash mobro dot co slash Justin McCumber, uh, you will find my page with uh, the pages of my ugly mug as well as donation links. And, um, you know, if you can, I know breast cancer gets a lot of awareness as it should, but there are also can other cancers out there that deserve attention and uh, money as well. And I think these are a, a worthy cause. It runs the length of November, but uh, it is Movember. I'm a part of it. And hopefully you guys will want to be too. Huh. I would gladly cool. participate if I could grow anything, any mustache that was deeper than John Waters. You know? <laughs> just this dirty lip shit. Yeah, just, just dirty and, and small, you know. So, uh, Brian, you have any parting thoughts? Do you have anything cool that you're helping to give back? Probably not. No, I'm, I'm nah. I'm not really involved with a whole lot. So, sorry. <laughs> you got a nice little beard, just, though, in your picture. Yeah. You have a goatee. You should shave it. Yeah. Well, it's too late. You have to start. You have, if you're gonna you have do to do it, it, it on the first. To, you had to yeah. do it yesterday. So I started. Brian, you're, I did uh, start yesterday. I'm a day, day, story of my life. I'm a day late. But you can still donate a buck. Absolutely. I will do that. Oh, that's very noble. I'm going to do it penny by penny. Is that okay? As long as it adds Cheap up to a dollar. Bastard. No, but you'll get it eventually. It's well, more, you know what? You'll get, that's you'll anticipation. get nut cancer, and then you'll be wishing you'd give a little more money. <laughs> get nut cancer. Wow. All right. And with that, we are the uh, Hollywood Outsider. Uh, we uh, will be back next week with the topics I already talked about. Please be, sh yeah, please be sure to email us if you'd like at uh, feedback at thehollywoodoutsider.com. And we will definitely see you next week. Bye, popcorn. Fuck <laughs> tart. Visit, I just wanna go home. You are unable to understand that I'm doing the best I can, and all I know is all I'd rather be home. So what happened? Why exactly weren't you here when you? I was across the street a little while ago helping, helping my neighbor move some stuff. Bodies, <laughs> maybe <Marion hookers. laughs> I don't want hookers. to admit to that because you know you like to put this shit on a uh, outtake. So <laughs> it could happen. I cut. I, I don't. I, you know the French call that evidence. <laughs> It's actually go to the website. You can watch it there. You don't have to search for it. What's the website again? TheHollywoodOutsider.com. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys hear about Herman Cain? Oh, he's falling apart real quick. 
They all what, are. What did he do now? Nothing, just more uh, accusations about him being a pimp. <laughs> it's, so hard here for a pimp. You know it's hard out here It's hard out here Maybe that's pimp. what this country needs is somebody with a strong hand. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I mean, I definitely fuck her. I mean, shit. I'd only push her out of bed if she wanted to fuck on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> you say the funniest shit. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Okay. Uh, all right. Wow, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about the what about the fuck tards over in? In Oregon, who were uh, who killed their de- who killed their horse, and then uh, like the chick got naked and crawled up inside it. Oh God, it's not a fucking tauntaun. Just gotta 